Hi friends, so now I'll uh, move to chapter 12, which is on interest rate risk management. I'll set the context of the theory discussion here. See, what we do in interest rate risk management is we are trying to evaluate the risk on a company's cash flow or the variation in company's cash flow due to changes in interest rates. Because any change, increase or decrease in interest rates can impact a company. Just to set the context better, this risk is more predominant from a bank's point of view. Because banks are the people who can get significantly impacted due to changes in interest rates. So, this risk is not that much from a corporate point of view, but a risk which impacts significantly a banking company because banks earn their income through interest and their expenditure is also through interest, major part of the expenditure, major part of the income is interest income and major part of the expenditure is also interest income. So, any changes in interest rates can significantly impact their profit and loss account. The debit side and credit side both get significantly impacted. So, let's first start. How does interest rates or how does a country determine interest rates? I think the primary factor is your supply and demand of money. The demand of money is predominantly dependent on economic growth. That is, if a, an economy is growing at a rapid rate, it means more capital expenditure needs to be done. And also, there will be more working capital need. So, when there is a significant growth happening in the economy, demand for money will go up which will ultimately increase the interest rates and it's a cycle. As interest rate starts going up, people will start feeling the pinch and they will have lesser demand for money and then interest rates will come to stability. Second factor is inflation. Inflation are the government. Basically, inflation is through RBI. Government through the central bank, government through the central bank can control the inflation of a country. So, any increase in inflation will increase the interest rates and decrease in inflation will decrease the interest rates. So, one important factor which also plays a part is your inflation aspect. Third part is government. Government is because they are one biggest borrower. So, if they are borrowing a lot, that can influence the interest rate. And also the government through central bank, government through the central bank, which is the Reserve Bank of India, can control the various key rates like your CRR, SLR, bank, SLR, bank rate, which will all have an impact on inflation and indirectly the interest. So, to me, the most important factor is inflation or growth. Both are interlinked because if growth is there, inflation will start going up. So, growth and the inflation are two major factors which are going to impact the interest rates in a country. Explain the concept of benchmark rates. Now, we did multiple problems in derivatives. We did some call option, uh, sorry, uh, cap, sorry, in interest rate itself. We did some cap option, put option, or whenever we take a loan in the practical world, this loan is normally a floating loan with benchmarked against some rate. For example, banks will say MCLR plus 0.5 percent or uh, bank rate plus 1 percent. So, there is some benchmark. So, what is benchmark is reference rate. Benchmark is reference rate which forms the basis for the determination of other interest rates. Uh, it, is, it is very critical because all your derivative transaction, floating rate loans will happen based on this benchmark rate because without the benchmark rate in place, you will not be in a position to enter into these kind of derivative transactions or floating rate loans. Now, Historically, the benchmark rate was LIBOR. LIBOR is lender 
London Interbank Offered Rate. This was a popular benchmark rate. See, benchmark rate is very critical because based on the benchmark rate, my derivatives uh, settlement will happen, floating rate loans, interest rate will get determined. Because some manipulation were done, uh, the economy started shifting away from LIBOR. This happened in January 1, 2022. So, after that, they have started moving to ARR. What is ARR? It's alternative reference rate, which are different in different countries. For example, in US, we have secured overnight financing rate. In USA, we have, again, sterling overnight index average. In Europe, we have euro short term rate. So, multiple rates are there. In India, we have MIBOR. Like we have London Interbank Offered Rate. Mumbai Interbank Offer Rate, Mumbai Interbank Bid Rate. Like you have Offer Rate and Bid Rate. We have Bid Rate and Offer Rate in a Forex transaction. Similarly, in Interest Rate, you can have a Bid Rate and a Offer Rate. So, Mumbai Interbank Offer Rate and Mumbai Interbank Bid Rate are used in all kind of your derivative like Interest Rate Swaps, FRA, Floating Rate Debenture. These are very critical because without alternative reference rates or without benchmark rates, it is impossible for me to do a settlement, settlement of a derivative transaction or entry into a derivative transaction. What are the different types of interest rate risk? Let us be very clear. What is interest rate risk is variation in my cash flow due to changes in interest rate. Uh, see, it's impossible for me to have control on interest rates. So, as a company or as a bank, more from a bank point of view, it is impossible for us to have control on interest rates. Interest rates can go up because of RBI transactions, can go down. We learned how interest rates are determined. So, if interest rates are going up, Either my debit side of PNL or credit side of PNL will be impacted, which ultimately impacts my profit. So I don't want debit and credit side to be impacted. That is what you will have to keep in mind. Now, what is gap exposure? Is a gap exposure are basically mismatch risk. What is mismatch risk? Is an organization will have assets which can be two types of assets interest rate sensitive assets and non interest rate sensitive asset what is interest rate sensitive asset is you invested in fixed deposit which is an asset fixed deposit income is an interest rate sensitive asset because if interest rates go up then your income will go up and interest rates going down, income will go down. So, we can have interest rate sensitive asset. We can also have interest rate sensitive liability. What is interest rate sensitive liability? In the liability, creditor may not have any exposure to interest rate risk, but a loan, equity shares will not. So, if you have more interest rate sensitive asset, then it is a positive gap. And if you have less interest rate sensitive asset, then it's a negative gap. I ideally would want a zero gap because if I have exactly same interest rate sensitive asset and interest rate sensitive liability, interest rates going up, more income, more expense in because your asset, you earn income and on liability, you earn have liability, you have expense. So if interest rates are going up, income will go up, expense will go up interest rates are going down if interest rates are going down then it's very simple again interest rates going down if you have exactly similar interest rate sensitive asset and interest rate sensitive liability problem is not there for me because interest rate sensitive liability my expense will go down my income will also go down and I'm matching it. That is called gap exposure. If you have, if your interest rate, so gap exposure in simple words is interest rate, interest rate, interest rate sensitive assets is not, is not equal to interest rate sensitive liabilities both are not equal we'll get this risk called gap exposure next is basis risk what is basis risk is see for let me talk more on a bank for a bank 
इनकम इज इंटरेस्ट इनकम एक्सपेंसिस दीज आर प्रिडामेंट ओके देर कैन बी अदर्स ऑल्सो इंटरेस्ट एक्सपेंस डिफरेंस इज कॉल्ड नेट डिफरेंस इज कॉल्ड नेट इंटरेस्ट इनकम ए बेसिस रिस्क कैन लीड टू एक्सपैंशन ऑफ नेट इंटरेस्ट इनकम कैन लीड टू expansion of net interest income what is expansion is increase in net interest income or it can also lead to decrease in net interest income there can be an increase in net interest income or a decrease in net interest income if it is an increase it is a positive shift for the company or a favorable basis shift and if it leads to contract then it is a negative shift it causes the nii to expand favorable basis shift and if it causes to go down it is a negative or an adverse shift now what is this risk is all about now what can happen is my asset all are fixed interest liability all are floating interest so in this case if interest rates go up my asset will have more income sorry my asset will have same income sorry if interest rates go up my asset will have same income but my liability will have more expense now my liability will have more expense because you have taken a floating interest rate loans so in this case interest rates going up will lead to a negative impact for me and in case both were at fixed or both were at floating then i don't have a problem the risk that interest rate of different asset liability may change in different magnitude assets are benchmarked against fixed rate liability are benchmarked against floating rate of interest embedded option risk what is embedded option risk is a bank earns its income to loans which are given and what a bank would want is they would not want their customers to make any prepayment of loans i don't want my customers to make any prepayment of loans i just want them to make prompt payment no prepayments because any prepayment leads to decrease in income any prepayment leads to decrease in income so i don't want any kind of prepayment to come but as you are aware in a practical world prepayments can keep happening something which are beyond control so when interest rates start going up in the economy borrowers would want to make prepayment and this is called embedded option risk significant changes in interest rate create another source of risk for banks profitability as i said i am talking about more of banks profitability or this risk is more from a bank point of view encouraging prepayment if you encourage prepayment this will have impact on the net interest income of the bank yield curve risk now what is yield curve risk is in basis risk what we learnt is you can have one on fixed another one on floating now bank did smart what bank did is asset floating rate liability also floating rate still there can be a risk asset i have given my asset or i have given loans to my customer at a floating rate of interest and i have taken loans at floating rate but they are at different benchmark what are different benchmark you have practical world one month my bor three month by my bor 12 month my bor you have my bed you have uh, bank rates you have mclr so you have different benchmark unfortunately when interest rates changed in the economy these benchmarks when interest rates changed in the economy these benchmarks these benchmarks did not move in the same direction non parallel movement in a floating interest rate scenario banks may price their asset and liability on different benchmarks two different instruments 
uh, any non parallel movement in yield curve would affect the nii my focus is my net interest income should not get impacted what next is price risk price risk is you know yield of a security and price are inversely proportional so in case interest rates are going up are going down it will lead to variation in the bond price which will ultimately impact me when assets are sold before their stated maturity bond prices are inversely related so this will also impact the company an opposite of price risk is your reinvestment risk we learned about this concept in bond valuation that what an organization can do is they can make their investment horizon equal to duration of the bond this ensures that there is no reinvestment risk and price risk because when interest rates go up you earn more on reinvestment side but your price goes down when interest rates go down when interest rates go down price goes up but your reinvestment income will clash will go down what we are doing in the concept of duration is gain from one element should offset should offset the loss from the other element reinvestment risk is the uncertainty are the reinvestments happening at lower interest rates in future which ultimately impact again me net interest position risk now for bank one important source of their profitability is lot of their liabilities are non interest paying example you have current accounts on current accounts they don't pay any interest so if a bank has very high proportion of non interest paying liability then what will happen is if interest rates are going up if interest rates are going up they'll earn more on the assets on the liability impact will not be much because i have lot of non paying liability so that is a favorable thing but if interest rates go down that can be an impact this is similar to your uh the element on which we saw which is your gap exposure because your current account is non interest rate sensitive liability when i say current account current account of my customers size of non interest it should be non interest not non paying non interest paying liability where banks have more earning asset interest rate risk arises when market interest rates adjust downwards if there's a downward adjustment it is going to be impacted so we learn what are the various risks associated with interest rate now how do i hedge it because our focus in afm has always been understanding the risk and taking certain corrective action on that we learned about correcting corrective action even in futures in forex here also in interest rate also we have certain corrective action to take which is broadly classified into traditional method and modern method some of the methods you have already seen like forward rate agreements interest rate futures interest rate caps uh, all this we have already seen floors collars swaps so first let me talk about asset and liability management alm management what is alm management is and a bank will have current liability non current liability will have current short term assets long term assets short term liability long term liability you will have to balance you will have to balance what is balancing this in case a customer comes to a bank and tells that i need 50 lakh rupees now the bank cannot tell the customer that we do not have adequate liquidity to pay this so the alm framework will enable them to ensure that they are able to meet the commitments of whichever customers as well as maximizing their income alm is a comprehensive and dynamic framework for measuring and managing the risk it is the management of structure of balance sheet balance sheet liability and asset that is short term asset long term asset short term liability long term liability net interest income is maximized net interest income is maximized while ensuring liquidity part is taken care forward rate agreement is fra is a tool 
to fix the future interest rate fr is a tool where and borrower or lender can protect itself from the unfavorable changes in the interest rate the borrower or lender can fix the future interest rate we have seen this uh, when we were solving problems in interest rate uh, area fra as a tool can be used by the normal borrowers it can also be used by the bank now the modern methods interest rate futures again uh, the difference the interest rate futures and fra serve the same purpose the only difference is interest rate futures happen through exchange so in case when you are doing it through exchange there can be certain challenges in interest rate future because you may not get the exact contract which you want and you may not be in a position to cover the entire exposure but still this is one more tool which is there again you are trying to fix the future interest rate borrower will enter into a seller future today if interest rates rise in the future borrower is kind of impacted because when interest rates are going up but he will earn on the future side and that will take care interest rate options which is also called interest rate guarantee i'm not discussing much about all this because we have already seen interest rate option is a right but not an obligation you can go through a cap option you can go through a floor option you can go through a caller option cap restricts the maximum interest outflow floor provides for minimum interest inflow and caller is a combination of cap and a floor option interest rate swap in case of an interest rate swap what happens is i take a floating rate loan and i convert that into a fixed rate i convert that into a fixed rate in this option or by doing this i protect myself from increase in or decrease in interest rate or variation in interest rate in an interest rate swap the parties from the swap counterparties agree to exchange payments indexed to two different interest rate it could be indexed to fixed versus floating which is called plain vanilla swap plain vanilla swap is fixed versus the floating exchange of fixed rate loan to a floating rate loan basis rate swap basis rate swap is to eliminate your basis risk which we saw basis risk which we saw where what happens is uh, you have taken a fixed rate loan another guy has a floating rate loan so basis rate risk and the yield curve risk both can be eliminated so first one is plain vanilla swap in a basis rate swap what can happen is you can try to enter into a swap where one person would be paying a one month libor and receiving a three month libor other person would be paying a three month libor so here you are going to have the instruments which are are the the payer and the receiver both are going to pay floating rate but they are benchmarked against different benchmarks different benchmark asset swap what is asset swap is we did one problem i think in uh, our uh, uh, derivatives chapter where i am going to pay fixed rate but i will receive a floating rate that floating depends on maybe the earning out of sensex are earning on gold so i will pay 1% you will have to pay me whatever gold increase or decrease decrease means i'll have to give so indirectly what we are trying to do in an asset swap is we are doing a swap we are doing a swap between we are doing a swap between two items what are the two items the first item is a fixed rate and the second item what is the second item is it could be sensex return it could be nifty return it could be gold return that is called asset swap and in an amortizing swap the notional principal will keep going down the notional principal because when you take a loan you take a loan of 10 crore but every year or every month there will be some payment so you would want that notional principal to keep going down so different types of interest rate swap is there plain vanilla swap also called as generic swap fixed versus floating basis rate swap floating versus floating asset swap fixed or floating could be fixed or floating anything versus versus a real return on some asset a real return like an index return 
amortizing swap is it could be either of the plain vanilla basis rate or an asset swap where the notional principle will keep declining the notional principle will keep declining next is what are swaptions and explain its type again i think more critical from a bank point of view sometimes even uh, the normal uh, companies can also use a swaption is basically an option on an interest rate swap that is i plan to borrow after 6 months when i plan to borrow after 6 months i am going to take a floating loan which i may or may not want to convert into fixed that is i'll take a floating loan floating to fixed conversion can happen floating to fixed conversion can happen through swaption floating to fixed conversion can happen through interest rate or can happen through interest rate swap and i may or may not enter into it that flexibility comes through swaption it gives you a right but not an obligation an interest rate swaption is simply an option on an interest rate swap it gives you a right but not an obligation an example is there a 3 month into a 5 year swaption what is 3 month into a 5 year swaption is after 3 months you can enter into a 5 year interest rate swap if you want if you want there are two types of swaption a fixed rate payer swaption what is a fixed rate payer swaption it gives a right but not an obligation to enter into a swap where i'll be paying the fixed interest fixed rate payer pay the fixed interest receive the floating interest pay the fixed rate interest and receive the floating rate interest a fixed rate receiver swaption is one where i'll be receiving the floating rate and paying the fixed rate as can as we see in different instruments purpose is very simple purpose of swaptions is primarily for hedging purpose and speculation purpose hedging and speculation can be applied for active traders as well as corporate active traders will do speculation treasurers will do hedging they will do hedging swaptions are useful for business tendering for contracts acceptable borrowing rate all this can happen through a swaption what do you mean by the term cheapest to deliver bond in the context of interest rates futures we normally do a net settlement of futures we normally do a net settlement of futures what is net settlement of futures is you compute the original position you identify the opposite position see how much profit or loss and do a net settlement but now what happened is i have purchased a future or i have sold a future and the delivery needs to be done now issue is our futures are standardized instrument and those instruments for example one instrument said 8% gui bond in the practical world there is no 8% gui bond so what to do now what can be done is uh, for an interest rate futures the exchange bsc or nsc will tell list of bonds which can be given for delivery list of bonds which can be given for delivery but what happens is the prices of each of these bonds will be different so that is why what exchange will do is they'll give a conversion factor they'll give a conversion factor we have seen this in problem solving also so that is why i may not explain much now we will have a conversion factor for every type of a bond all the deliverable bonds have different maturities and coupon rate have different maturities and coupon rate so for this there is a conversion factor now what is the deliverable delivery price that is delivery prices either you get it from the other person or you pay is conversion factor into future settlement price conversion factor into future settlement price if you are a seller of future you will give the bond and get this you will give the bond how will you give the bond buy it in the market give it to the other person and get conversion factor into futures price conversion factor into futures price profit of settlement of futures is future settlement price into conversion factor inflow 
and this is my outflow and if you are a seller of sorry uh, this is profit of seller of futures loss of seller of futures is the opposite doesn't really matter i need not write this it's self explanatory profit is self explanatory loss is the opposite so if you are a seller of a future and if somebody is saying please deliver the bond if somebody is saying please deliver the bond go ahead and buy the bond from the market and deliver it go ahead and buy the bond from the market and deliver it when you deliver it you will get future settlement price into the other one is not needed it is self explanatory this is as far as your cheapest to deliver bond the last part is default risk and reinvestment risk what does reinvestment risk is uh, i think already said every time you get some coupon payment they need to be reinvested so if interest rates go down in the economy the reinvestment can happen at a lower rate which will ultimately impact my realized ytm realized ytm default risk is i have invested in a bond instrument and unfortunately the counter party the counter party has defaulted on its obligation if they default on their debt obligation i'll not be getting money from them and that is going to impact me so default risk is the other party is not making payment on their debt obligation in fact to cover this also we learnt about cds credit default swaps or cdo all those instruments can be used to cover against the default risk so kind of a very simple uh, area let me quickly uh, summarize or revise this we first started with how interest rates are fixed primarily on supply and demand of money which is inflation and government action benchmark rates is reference rates using which the other rates are calculated earlier we were using libor now we have moved to alternative reference rates in india we have mybor and mybit different types of interest rate is gap exposure interest rate sensitive asset not equal to interest rate sensitive liability basis risk some assets are some of them are at floating rate some of them are at fixed rate embedded option risk people are making pre payments which is impacting my income yield curve risk both asset and liability are at floating benchmark but one is at different benchmark one month my bor another one is at three month buy bor my bor and if if there is increase or change in interest rate and non parallel movement what is non parallel movement is the movement in these benchmarks is not same that will also impact price risk is inverse relationship between bond price and interest rate reinvestment risk is inability to make fresh investments net interest position risk is in a case of a bank they have lot of they have lot of assets on which for liabilities on which they don't pay interest so if this is sizable and interest rates go down they'll be impacted because on liability they are not paying interest on assets the income is going down various methods to hedge interest rate risk traditional method is alm framework forward rate agreements which are there the newer ones is interest rate futures options and swaps we have different types of swaps plain vanilla swap or generic swap fixed versus fixed so fixed versus floating then we have basis rate swap where floating one versus floating two asset swap is fixed versus some variable income arising out of index gold anything amortizing swap is the notional principle will keep going down swaptions swaptions are very simple swaptions is simply an option on interest rate swap it gives you a right but not an obligation right but not an obligation to enter into a uh, interest rate swap in future you can have a fixed rate payer swaption and a floating rate payer swaption useful for both speculation as well as hedging purpose cheapest to deliver bond is i am a seller of the future the other guy is saying please give me the bond so i'll go ahead and buy the bond from the market at the spot price and give a delivery when i give a delivery the delivery will have an conversion factor so conversion factor into futures price is my inflow what i uh, buy is my outflow and that will give me profit or loss default risk is people not making payments on the debt obligation this risk will be there in almost all credit transaction you can eliminate them partly or you can eliminate them through your credit derivatives an example is your credit default swap or cdo if there are doubts you can message me thank you friends